In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, my dear brothers and sisters, to the celebration of Holy Mass today. Today is Saturday of week 11 in ordinary time, and today we celebrate the memorial of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And the prayers and the readings for the memorial you'll find on page 1640, 1640 in your daily missals. Today's Mass is offered up for the repose of the souls of Div de Villiers, Manuel Jardim, David Ahrens, Irene Russells, Mr. and Mrs. Baron, and the deceased members of the Oxenham and Teichler families. And today, as we celebrate the memorial of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we ask for her intercession, that she, who is a mother who knows the needs of her children, may intercede for us with Jesus Christ, her Son. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who prepared a fit dwelling place for the Holy Spirit in the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, graciously grant that through her intercession we may be a worthy temple of your glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The descendants of my people shall be known among the nations and their offspring in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are a people whom the Lord blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bride decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Saviour. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who were hungry have ceased to hunger. 
The barren has born seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts up the needy from the dung heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is the Virgin Mary who kept the word of God and pondered it in her heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey. And they sought him among the king's folk and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, seeking him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when they saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospels are understandably focused on Jesus Christ. But in the Gospels also, we find fascinating and inspiring stories of the disciples of Jesus, including stories which mention his parents, Mary and Joseph. In today's Gospel reading, we hear of Mary's initial reaction to Jesus' indifference to their anxiety. We hear Mary's response to this. Like any parent, Mary first expresses her irritation, her annoyance. Son, why have you treated us so? Your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. I remember when I was in primary school, I was punished with detention one Friday afternoon, and I didn't tell my parents hoping that they would presume that I had gone straight to altar server practice after school. The school bus left me behind, and because I didn't know the evening rush at the taxi rank, with long queues of many people coming from work, I got home very late. So late that my father was even back from work, and they had driven all the way back to my school in search of me. Having no cell phone or a landline at home, I couldn't tell my parents that I was back. 
and so they searched for me for many hours. I waited for them back at home. And when they came back, after the shock of seeing me back at home, my mother said, why have you done this to us? I could have answered similarly to Jesus and told them to relax as I was back home. I was only at detention, but I didn't. I simply apologized and watched them get over their anxiety and the thoughts that were going through their minds, imagining what could have happened to me. Children do these sorts of things. And in the gospel we hear, Jesus even did so. Children don't, re don't consider the long-term consequences of their actions, especially how their actions affect their parents. Fortunately, with time, children learn. As Luke tells us in the gospel, Jesus went back home with, Jesus, with uh, Joseph and Mary and he was obedient to them. Mary, however, didn't simply get over it. She continued to ponder, to reflect, keeping all these things in her heart, as Luke tells us. Did she finally understand the words of Jesus on that day? Perhaps she did, after much pondering and reflecting. And my mother kept the, that experience of that day for many years in her heart, too. And she often brings her experience up when, for example, we're watching news and we hear of a child who has gone missing. She remembers that day. She has pondered that experience in her heart, she has learned from it how to take care of her children, and she hopes that her children have learned from that experience too. And so Mary ponders the experiences of Jesus in her heart. And today, as we celebrate the Immaculate Heart of Mary, whose memorial we keep every year, we are reminded once again that Mary ponders the experiences of Jesus in her heart. His birth, his ministry, his crucifixion and death, and his resurrection. She continues to ponder in her heart the experiences of so many of Jesus' disciples today, you and me. Let us never grow tired of going to Mary, asking for her intercession, because like any other mother, Mary knows all too well what her children are going through and what she can do to help them grow closer to her son. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pondering all our experiences, Pray for us. Let us now bring our petitions to the Lord. We pray for the church, that God who chose us from the foundation of the world and destined us for adoption in Christ Jesus may see his loving will accomplished in every one of us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that our Heavenly Father, for whom nothing is impossible, may hear our prayers through the intercession of Mary, our prayers for peace, for life, and for justice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for ourselves, that we may imitate our Blessed Mother's humility and her faith-filled consent to the unfolding plan of God in our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
We pray for all who want to hide from God as they feel guilt for their sin, that God may find them and continue the dialogue with them until truth does its cleansing work in them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the sick and the suffering who have, rec who have recommended themselves to our prayers, that with Mary Immaculate, they may, let it, they may let the will of God be done in their lives and surrender to his grace in peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our loved ones who have died, that God, who chose them, may cleanse them and make them immaculate for the praise of his glory in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us now say a prayer to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. O Immaculate Heart of Mary, full of goodness, show your love towards us. Let the flame of your heart, O Mary, descend on all God's people. We love you immensely. Impress true love in our hearts so that we may have continuous desire for God's will. O Mary, gentle and humble of heart, remember us when we are in sin and pray for us to Jesus, your Son. Give us, by means of your immaculate heart, spiritual health. Let us always see the goodness of your motherly heart, and may we be converted by means of the flame of your love. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful, presented in commemoration of Blessed Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and forgiveness. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I will use preface one of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the third Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on this feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, she brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all who you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be offered up for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Booty our Bishop and Duncan his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us pause for a moment now and ask the Lord to grant us the gift of his peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
I invite you now, my brothers and sisters, to make an act of spiritual communion, asking the Lord to come and dwell in your hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly venerated the Blessed Virgin Mary on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us remain in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God.